What's up, peeps? Welcome to the straight shooting rants. And you know what? Bit of a serious subject right now. Well, more than a serious subject. And I'd like to, somewhat tongue in cheek, name this this audio vlog "Black Lives Matter." Sometimes. Um, now, I want to first off say rest in peace to George Floyd. And it's one of them where you can hear by the tone in my voice that clearly it's going to be a little more somber. Now, as a young black male myself, I'm 34 years old. And it's one of them, yeah, I may not be a spring chicken, but the fact of the matter is this, the George Floyd incident with Derek, Derek Chauvin, this has highlighted and brought up once again a major problem of not only police brutality but institutional racism and I'll come back to that majorly in a bit but one of the things that one of the, one of the, one of the things if you don't know the background I won't give you I won't give you the gory details but the fact of the matter is Derek Chauvin is a piece of is a piece of sh- I'll leave it. I'll leave it as that. But the sad thing is, there are actually quite a few like him in the police force in America, but also police forces in and around America. But also, there's a lot over here in Britain who are like that as well. I'll get into that a bit later. But the issue of police brutality against black men is one issue that of course is very close is very close to my heart being the race that I am but all but the fact is I've had I've had my issues at times where I where I've been stopping stop and searched on occasions completely unnecessarily with the with the flimsiest of excuses that oh somebody oh some something got robbed in the area and you fit a description and it's like yeah I bet I do I bet I do fit a description, but more on that later. But it's a case of, with the George Floyd case, the fallout has been very, very interesting. I mean, a lot of people have come out and have said their piece. A lot of people, fair dues. A lot of people don't get it and will never get it. But for me, my issue is with a system. Because there were always going to be, there, I mean, sadly, there were always bad apples everywhere. But when a system is fundamentally wrong and fundamentally broken, that's what needs to be changed. Now, in regards to fallout to to the George Floyd death, murder, the George Floyd murder, let's call it that, because that's what it is. Derek Chauvin, he may he murdered George Floyd by putting his knee on his neck. And when he said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, didn't take it off. Held his knee there for nine minutes. So it's one of them ones. So please try and convince me that that's not deliberate. But one guy, one guy I spoke to at work about it said, if they all do that in public, what are they doing behind closed doors in regards to the police? <clears throat> and it's not all police. I'm not saying that. But if that, but yeah, if they all do that in public, what are they doing behind behind closed doors? And I said to him, I have two words for you: smiley culture. You may remember that name. If you don't, please Google it. But it is one of them ones where, as much as people are saying it's an American problem, we're actually no better here in Britain. And all the focus right now is obviously on what's happening in America and the protests and all of that. And understandably so but we can't take our eye off the ball because one interesting thing one interesting thing that um that a lady said to me at work where she said it was she said it was disgusting there were about three of us talking about it and she was and she was a customer she said and she said yeah it's disgusting and the world is and the world was watching but i'm thinking to myself yeah as much as that's true that the world was watching my thought was the more important question is what's the world going to do about it? Because it's one thing to watch something and film it on your phone, but the next step is to do something about it. 
So it's one of them ones where I feel that one of the problems with police brutality in America and also in Britain is this fact that there is usually outcry briefly, but then things quickly go back to normal. Just like with politics and tragedies in general, where things quickly go back to normal and they move on to the next thing. So, for example, people are shouting loud about the Dominic Cummings situation during the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. They're saying that that's a disgrace. But you know what? I've even done a, I've even done a vlog on it, an audio vlog on it myself. But the fact is, I reckon after a couple of weeks, it will just be another thing that people moaned about and it will be forgotten. To me, the issue here is not just a race issue with police brutality, but it is a large component. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the only one. If you compare police brutality and politics, the issue is institutional and institutions won't change overnight. It takes focused and consistent pressure to change a system that is broken and it needs all of us to come together and change it. It really does. Regardless of regardless of your race, creed, gender, whatever, because if one person can be stung by this by this level of injustice, it's like that that they can start doing it to others and eventually doing it to everyone. So as much as people want to say I think it's North Korea being a communist state and all that, look at that they're treading on everyone. But for example. I'll give you a couple of examples. Look at the work done by the Hillsborough Justice Campaign and Justice for Grenfell and also Grenfell United. All three of these entities have been battling for years for justice because they're trying to change a broken system. And in my view, it is made a lot more difficult when something like the Grenfell Tower tragedy is minimized to just a housing issue or the Hillsborough disaster is minimized to just a football issue. Because both of these are a lot bigger than that. Both of these are a hell of a lot bigger than that. I mean, it was one of them was the Hillsborough disaster to change football in this country. And in large part, you could argue around Europe. Because it's one of them was stadiums after that disaster were then required to be all seater, especially in the top in the um, in the top divisions. So that changed that changed everything. I mean, the Grenfell Tower tragedy is not just a housing issue, how the media try to portray it. They try to portray it at first as, oh, yeah, it's just a bunch of immigrants in a tower block. No, it's about a lot more than that because the flammable cladding on that building is present on hundreds of other buildings up and down the UK. So it's not just a simple housing issue. It's not just a London housing issue. It's not just a social housing issue. It's a major issue of safety. So it's one of them. But these issues, along with George Floyd, Trayvon Martin, Rodney King, Stephen Lawrence, Smiley Culture, Mark Duggan. So free from, free from the States, free from here. <laughs> it's one of them. And countless others who have been murdered by police brutality and or negligence or corruption even as well, it can't be allowed to continue without people being held accountable for their actions. But you know what? Accountability will only happen when we all stop minimizing these into just race issues and pointless hashtags such as hashtag Black Lives Matter. I did, I'm, I'm all cool with the concept of Black Lives Matter, but minimizing something like that into a hashtag I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of because putting them in that narrow description makes it easier to dismiss. And if it can be done to one set of people, as I said earlier, believe me, it can be expanded to others. And the thing is, when you minimize something, I said, when you minimize something to just one thing, oh, it's just a race issue. Oh, it's just a London housing issue. Boom. Easily dismissed very easily dismissed but i'll come back to that in a bit but we do live in a world with a parasitic media as i call them who feeds off this and it and it controls and perpetuates a negative narrative using negative representation of certain ethnic groups specifically to justify negative actions which have negative consequences such as brexit 
and other negative outcomes. Donald Trump being elected. So it's one of them where the media control is Boris Johnson over here. Boris Johnson being elected. That was a com- that was a complete media controlled, contrived swerve. Blatantly was. But for me, there needs to be an uprising. But it can't be a small amount of individuals. It has to be a united front between all of us who have been downtrodden. All of us in the working class. All of us impoverished or poor, as, as some people want to pull it. All of us who are not the wealthy elite. Because there's a lot more of us than there are of them. And there is strength in numbers. But that fear factor needs to be removed. But it is one of them was remember this analogy. Together the ants are stronger than the elephant and can topple it. And remember this saying as well, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. Or as Dr. Martin Luther King put it, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Two ways of putting it, same sort of vein of thought. But you know what? Until we realize that the above is true. No matter what you, no matter what, what I just said was true. No matter what your race, no matter what your religion, creed, or sexual orientation, then sadly things will remain the same, and any change will be minuscule at best, and things will continue to get swept under the rug, as they are. I mean, I mean, I mean, with institutional racism in the policing, this country, and on the, on that bigger scale in the states, it's always swept under the rug. It's like a black person dies in police custody. Nah, yeah, swept under the rug. Happens too often. Someone gets pulled over. Black person gets pulled over. Unnecessary force used. A, mur- a murder basically happens. Gets swept under the rug. Someone gets fired. And that's it. No justice. But for me, one of the, there was there was there was there was one interesting thing that came out uh, that came out of one of many actually of the George Floyd murder and for me misdirection slash false flag stuff is almost always in play with certain situations so you look at the rioting in Minnesota with the alleged police officer breaking windows with a hammer to incite a riot false flag stuff that's one of them ones where it's deliberately getting the deliberately trying to incite something so that you can swerve it later on and go oh look what look what they're doing Look, see, this is why we don't give them rights in the first place. It's all manipulating perception and the media help with that. <clears throat> so it's one of them where it's like, I said, it's deliberately done to divert attention from the real issue. And that diversion ends up causing change not to happen. Because you look at the Mark Duggan, you look at the Mark Duggan death back in 2011. Most people, when you ask them about that incident, all they remember is the looting. I'm not calling it writing because it wasn't writing. Writing usually has a cause. Protesting usually it usually has a reason. And protesting is usually peaceful unless it's provoked to go the other way. And protesting usually has a just cause. So looting and all that, no. That's opportunistic. As I've said since 2011, that is opportunistic criminal morons taking advantage of an opportunity. So, and it's unfortunate that the, that the Mark Duggan incident will always be remembered for that. Now, for me, rioting and looting, it's a great way to give the parasitic media and the government as well every bit of ammo they need to justify stripping rights and also introducing draconian laws to keep people in line because they can use that violence, they can use that example spin it spin it through the media with the spin doctors and justify it and justify it like the destruction of the nhs making it look like it isn't fit for purpose by stripping its budgets year on year but the media aren't focusing on that they're just focusing on the waiting list times going up so it's one of them where it's like this manipulation of perception but for me, it's one of them was writing in, in one area doesn't change a broken system. Because some right there have been I mean there have been riots before, but nothing's changed. So it's one of them where it's like I said, writing 
can be and often is manipulated to pigeonhole those involved as thugs or savages. So as I said, it gives justification to deny what was originally being asked for, such as justice. And Donald Trump tweeting about, with his tweet, tweeting about, oh, having the support of the army and not letting thugs dishonor the memory of George Floyd, it's nothing more than a thinly veiled distraction tactic aimed at justifying using lethal force on civilians unnecessarily. Literally threatening it as well. Not even hiding it, threatening it. Was it the, the line? The line was, I think, I think one of the lines he used was, if you start looting, we'll start shooting. It's like, that's your response? Not, we need to talk about this in a rational fashion. Nah, we'll start shooting. Nah. And now bear in mind, that is, that is the most powerful man in the free world saying that. On a, on a public forum like Twitter. And yeah, Twitter warned him, but yeah, come but come on. <laughs> they're not going to do anything to his account. <clears throat> and they're not going to do anything to him either. But... For me, it's a case of a, unite, a unified front. A collective effort from everyone is needed. And more than ever, we need to be vigilant. Because there are a lot of threats to our rights and our humanity at the moment. Whether it be US government, UK government. And one thing, one thing that, that my cousin actually um, sent me a link to was on WS, WBS TV in Atlanta. Killer Mike the rapper, he made a phenomenally eloquent speech, which I urge you to seek out. I mean, I got put, I got put onto it on, and it was on the Twitter account of Ahmed Farid at F A R E E D N C B S Farid N C B S um, on Twitter. And Killer Mike did drop some tremendous points. Now, for, now I'll open this by saying this: those on the Twitter thread dis, like dismissing the name Killer Mike are actually completely missing the point. But he, he makes a great point about not destroying your own house but fortifying it, because burning your own house is literally cutting off your nose to spite your face. Because he was like, "Oh, what? It's like, what do you have? If you're if in protest, you're burning down your own stuff. Now, what do you have? You have nothing but charred ashes." And it was such a great way of putting it. Because the rioting, like rioting, looting in your own town doesn't do any good. All it show all it shows, because you're the one who's gonna have to rebuild and pick up those pieces. And people forget that in the hype, which is sad. But it is one of them ones. He is actually he is spot on about wanting to see the system burn. Because it's the system that is that is the problem. And I said, racism is systemic and it's institutionalized. So that means the institutions need to need to be destroyed and rebuilt and rebuilt and the system needs to. I mean, unfortunately, feeding fear and anger every day is what the parasitic media do, because that's what keeps them relevant. And they make money off it, which is why I call them parasitic. It's it's it's, it's literally the definition of a parasite for me. But. Even though Killer Mike is referring to Atlanta specifically, it also needs to be applied here in the UK and for the rest of America as well. But my, I said my fear about, about the George Floyd murder is that in a few weeks it will be forgotten and everybody will have just moved on to the next thing. Everybody will have moved on because it always happens that way. So, I mean, a phenomenally eloquent speech and much respect to Killer Mike for making it. I mean, you could hear every single bit of emotion pouring out from him because this is a real problem that needs a real and permanent solution and immediately. I mean, we as a people have a, have a responsibility and so do the media and politicians and we need to hold them accountable because accountability is key to eradicate this problem. And it will take patience because it won't happen overnight because, systemic, because a systemic problem doesn't come from one person. It encompasses multiple areas that need addressing and changing. And this is the thing where I was saying earlier, it take, it's patience. It's patience. Everybody needs to not just dig in, not just dig in with social media posts now and for the next couple of weeks. It needs to go on for life. It needs to keep going on. We need to keep this in the consciousness so that people don't forget 
because we are living in a time where there's never been more access. In my view, there has never been more access to information, but conversely, there has never been a time where there have been more lazy people. There's so much information, but people believe certain media sources and they are being fed nothing but propaganda or lies from a government or governments in this case and from institutions that don't care about them and all they're doing is manipulating perception in to keep their own interests going. So it's one of them. I mean, the officer who callously put his um, knee on George Floyd's neck, Derek Chauvin, and killed George Floyd, he deserves to not only be tried for murder, and you know, as I record this, he's been charged for, for, for he's been charged with third degree murder and manslaughter with the potential of further charges based on reviewing of evidence, but also he deserves to die in prison for his callous disregard for a human life. In addition to this, there does need to be a full judicial review into not only what happened, but how it got to that point. And how the how Officer Derek Chauvin was not only allowed to do this, but how the system that employs him is allowed to let this happen. And this needs to happen in America and Britain because both police systems have the same blood on their hands. And I said, I'm not saying every police every police officer is racist. Not saying that, because that's too sweeping a generalization. But those who are need weeding out. And the corruption within within the police forces here and in America and other places as well, but I'm focusing on the main two because they're two of the two of the most powerful nations in the world. Both of these systems are and have been proven to be institutionally racist. Remember the name, remember the names I mentioned. George Floyd, Trayvon Martin, Rodney King, Stephen Lawrence, Smiley Culture, Mark Duggan. The list goes on and on. These are examples of institutional racism within the system. Not and not even just with the police either. But the police are supposed to protect and serve, not murder and not employ double standards. You know what? I've tried to keep calm throughout all of this and I did not want to use any profanity because as I've said before, fear beats anger. And it's one of them ones where anger, anger generally will, will dissipate and it will dissipate pretty quickly. But fear, lives on fear will always live in the back of your mind and as i said and as i said earlier i fear that this in a few weeks maybe even maybe it'll take a few months because of the whole coronavirus covid19 pandemic and that as a distraction in and of itself this may there may be a lot of there may be a lot of fuss and bluster over the George over the George Floyd murder and I really hope it doesn't go this way. But it's one of them ones my fear is that this may be forgotten sooner rather than later and no change will happen at all. And we can't afford that. We can't afford that as a people. As said, if it can happen to one set of people, it's not long before it can happen to everyone. So it's one of them where everybody has to be vigilant. And I said, as a young black male, I've always had to be vigilant. I've always had to be. Because Operation Trident, who, do, who does that target? I mean, there's another example of institutional racism just in this country, in Britain. So it's one of them where... We're, we're, but we're what, six, as black people, we're what, like 6% of the population here. But there's a massive, it, but we massively disproportionately fill jails. And that's not by accident. I said, politicians, government, the media, especially, 
with their with their portrait with their portrayals and subtle subliminal things when it comes to us needs to change. It needs to change. And it needs to change now. You know what? I have been straight shooting LJ. The comment section is below. Hit me up and let me know your views. I would love to hear each and every one of your views. Please let me know what is on your mind. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think rioting's the way? Do you think violence is the way? Hey, what else? What else is there? Do you think voting's the way? Do you think democracy is the way? Get out and vote. What do you think? Comment section is below. I have been straight shooting LJ. And in somewhat of a more somber edition of the straight shooting rants, thank you for your time and I'll see you next time. Remember the comment section is below. Let me know your views.